vast majority of hunter-gatherers have a sense of uh, an overlapping set of rights. So antelopes have rights, farmers have rights, fisher folk have rights, hunter-gatherers have rights, and these rights aren't mutually exclusive. And so the key way that you manage the forest is by ensuring that whoever takes something from the forest shares it properly. And if you ensure that everything that's taken is shared properly between all who are present, then uh, you will have a healthy and vibrant uh, forest ecosystem. In terms of land rights, it doesn't really make sense in the indigenous conceptions of local people because uh, what they see it as is guardianship. It's a role of caring for the land. And the way you care for the land is that you ensure that people find plenty when they're on that land. And sharing is at the heart of maintaining an abundant environment. However, the current situation is that individuals or companies are given exclusive rights over a specific place or a specific resource in that place, and they're allowed to extract it until it's all gone. So you have very contrasting approaches there to what an engagement with the land means. And to make a, a sort of seamless translation between those very opposed views of uh, people's relationship to the land, uh, is not going to be possible. Actually, what's being demanded of indigenous people in the Congo Basin is that they change their perception of their connection to the land. But the fundamental problem for them in the context of uh, uh, overlapping land claims is that generally uh, sedentarized uh, farming peoples in Central Africa and have better access to local and national elites. And it tends to be the local and national elites that are making the decisions about land attribution. And they're not making those decisions necessarily on mapping processes or on any truth on the ground, but they're making those decisions based on a complex set of overlapping interests that they have in accessing rent from multinational companies, on accessing uh, controlled resources within those uh, areas. You have to separate the two claims out and recognize them independently but simultaneously. And otherwise you get into areas of quite extreme conflict and you can aggravate uh, the situation on the ground quite substantially. The problem is that in all these zoning plans which are applied, the idea is you've got to have some unique stakeholder, again it's this cultural impact of, or influence of uh, Western property legislation and capitalist property rules, uh, which lead to this uh, very mistaken view and the social damage that it does to the people who have to live the consequences of those exclusive attributions of ownership uh, is immense and you will see the long-term consequences of that in terms of alcoholism, domestic violence, uh, you know, serious health problems, uh, extraordinarily high infant mortality, uh, and a whole range of related illnesses uh, and social problems uh, that come with that conjunction of landlessness, uh, of too small an area for an effective hunting and gathering uh, economy, legislation that makes hunting illegal, or at least in, in practice illegal, even though it's not technically illegal, uh, and, and so on. So. The problems are enormous and the solutions haven't yet been found. We're at a point where either we listen uh, to the uh, solutions that hunter-gatherers and other local people have applied to these areas and try and formalise those into some sort of legal structure. Um, or we continue with this sort of imperialism of Western rights structures and impose them on the forest. Clearly, the more people who work on it from uh, a wide range of uh, positions, the better. But as long as they work with local people very closely and trying to formalize what local people are already doing, because these are systems that are very resilient. They've stood up to colonialism. They've stood up to a whole range of different They've been influenced and impacted by these historical forces, of course, but they are there and people have been living uh, some way or other, not always smoothly, uh, with these systems in place. And so we would start by learning them 
and then seeing whether our systems make any sense in that context.